Good morning or good afternoon everyone, depending on where you're joining us from and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Sam Moulton from the Business Review and I will be your host. It's our pleasure to have Olympus with us today who will be discussing diverse uses of advanced ultrasonic inspection technologies for pipeline manufacturing, construction and maintenance. Today's guest speaker is Nicholas Bublitz, Global Product Support Specialist. I'd like to welcome you all to our webinar platform on 24. You'll notice that this webinar is browser-based, so if you disconnect at any point, please click on the link you receive via email to rejoin. In order to ask questions, you can send them in via the Q&A widget at the bottom of your screen or use the questions box, which is at the top left-hand corner. We'll allocate around 10 or 15 minutes at the end of the session to try and address any of your questions or thoughts. If you click on the green resources widget, you'll find some links from our speakers to view. And if you require help at any point, please click on the yellow help widget. But now, without further ado, please allow me to welcome Nicholas. Nicholas, over to you. Thanks, Sam. Uh, I also want to echo the, the welcome Sam put off uh, on behalf of Olympus. We know it can be uh, quite hectic to join these live events, but uh, hopefully you enjoy it. Um, so we have uh, about 45 minutes for the, the main content, and we, as you can tell by the title, have a pretty diverse, broad uh, subject matter. So uh, the real goal here will be to, to give some basic introduction information about uh, all the different levels where advanced ultrasonic equipment is used along the pipeline manufacturing, construction, and maintenance process. Uh, and then pique your interest, and uh, there's plenty of other resources that we can go to um, for more in-depth information. So without uh, further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. So we look first uh, just to give everybody kind of a very basic understanding of basic ultrasonics, because we have a very diverse crowd of, of different uh, knowledge bases, I'm sure. Uh, basically, ultrasonic theory, we usually take uh, electronical energy, um, convert it into sound energy, and then uh, look for flaws or do wall thickness measurement inside of a piece. Uh, typically, in most industrial applications, that's done in a pulse echo uh, type matter where we're sending sound at a particular angle. Uh, it's reflecting off uh, an impedance mismatch, which could be a crack, uh, lack of fusion in a weld, uh, it could be the back side of a wall trying to measure the thickness or look for corrosion. And typically with ultrasonic techniques, uh, conventionally we use just one typical angle. Uh, that might be a zero degree as pictured here in the very top where we're looking for wall thickness or corrosion. Or it might be put onto a ultrasonic wedge or shoe uh, where we can actually generate an angle. Uh, but the basic properties are the same, usually with uh, two different types of waves, uh, longitudinal or shear wave. Um, more different types of wave exist, but uh, for most of our industrial NDT applications, uh, this is usually what we use in the field. Uh, the whole principle really works on the idea that we get the best reaction from flaws or a back wall or a corrosion cell when the ultrasound impends on the defect or the uh, material at a 90 degree angle. So as we start to deviate from this, uh, we might get less of an amplitude response or less of a uh, an echo back, and in some cases, if a flaw is highly oriented away from whatever angle we choose in ultrasonics, we might get no response. So we can see with only one angle, um, we're really limited uh, to what we can do. Um, typically for weld inspection, um, throughout the years, we've kind of looked at the general weld geometries. There's been some common angles that have been chosen, like 45, 60, and 70, where we can actually just screw on a different mechanical shoe. And that allows us the, the physical properties to generate it at whatever given angle is going to give us the best test. Um, typically what we get out of a conventional ultrasonic system is basically as we see here in the bottom picture, it's just a, an amplitude response and what we call an A-scan. Uh, different ways to display this on a gauge, uh, but typically with this we'll be able to get our amplitude response to determine the severity and also do some general sizing. Uh, different techniques exist to be able to tell the depth. Um, but unless we're doing a high, very high-end mechanical system, where there's a lot of mechanics and uh, full automation, um, we don't have a lot of uh, good picture or representation of the flaw. It's really based upon the person doing the ultrasound. 